Taking a look at the interior of the 2020 X3 M40i, coming over here to our iDrive screen, this is what we call our iDrive screen. These two screens together are what BMW calls Live Cockpit Professional. So this is what we call iDrive 7. That's the newest operating system that BMW has available. So that means like the layout and how everything is set up is all brand new. So here on your home screen, this is all adjustable. If you want to change anything, most people prefer to leave it as is. But here on the first page, which you can see down here is your home screen. It's set to have your navigation information, your entertainment information, and your communication. So if you have a phone connected, it'll show you how much battery you have, uh, how much signal you have, things like that. You scroll over. These are all configurable as well. So what you can do is press and hold this. And then if you push this button here, you can change it. So say we want support displays. And then you can add additional pages. You can delete the entire page. Or you can delete any of these boxes if you don't want them. They're called widgets. You can also tap on any of these and it'll take you into that menu. And then this here is your home button if you're using the touch screen. Otherwise, you just scroll through, make your selections that way. You can do it this way. If you wanted to save anything to what we call your presets, uh, all you do is select the channel that you want and then select add to presets. Do it again, just like that. Presets are different from favorites. Um, if you add anything to favorites, what's what that's saying is that every time say this Pearl Jam Just Breathe song comes on anywhere in the Sirius XM world it will give you a pop-up and let you know that that song's playing so you want to make sure that you really like that song before you add it to your favorites time shift is a short rewind window program guide is like the TV guide of radio and then sound settings is where you can adjust your treble and your bass and everything else in here So then if we come back to this main menu, now we have this presets option. So if we select that, we'll only see the two stations that we've added. And then you can add and delete from here as well by selecting this. So select this one, select delete. So that's serious. In FM radio, it looks a little bit different. This information here is all information provided by radio stations. So sometimes you can see here it kind of looks like nonsense. That's just the words that they're putting out. It doesn't always make sense. But it'll tell you the station that you're listening to. And again, you add it to presets in the same way. You can do what BMW calls a manual search. So if the station that you want to listen to isn't coming up, you can scroll through this way and find it. And then same thing with AM radio, just like FM, you have your manual search as well. Coming down here, when you have your phone connected, if you have an active Spotify account, you can manage it through here if you prefer not to use Apple CarPlay. Music collection, because we don't have a CD player anymore, you what you can do is you can save all of your music to a USB jump drive and plug it into your USB port right there and import the music to the vehicle. The vehicle has 20 gigabytes of available storage for your music. So you would select music collection, import the music, and you would find it there. And you'll be able to search through everything, look at your artists, search by song title. Under Bluetooth audio, this is where you can add and delete phones when you have something connected. If you have multiple phones connected, you can select that and choose between the phones. Screen mirroring is only available for Android phones, but it is the current workaround for Android Auto since that's not available quite yet. We're expecting it sometime this summer. Mobile devices is also where you can add and delete phones, so you would just select new device. Select which one you want and go from there. Most cars now do come with Apple CarPlay compatibility standard. Sometimes you just have to select that settings option and then make sure Apple CarPlay is checked and then go from there if you don't see it coming up at first. And then here in personalized menu, if you don't listen to FM or AM or you don't want to connect your music or you don't want Spotify or you don't want 
any of these things. You don't have to. You can take it out and customize that menu so then you're only seeing the features that you actually use. Here in communication, if you have your phone connected, this is where you'll see um, all of your contacts and where you can scroll through and make telephone calls through here if you prefer not to use Apple CarPlay. So if you have your contacts linked, you'll be able to scroll through them here. If you wanna make phone calls, you can do that here. There'll be a dial pad. Here you have a mobile devices menu where you can add and delete and make changes. Uh, you can also call BMW Assist through here if you need them. In navigation, this is very similar to the previous navigation except that all of the menus are all in one place now. So this used to be the main navigation menu and then you'd have to go to your map and then you'd have these over here on this side. So now it's all been put on one screen. You can swipe this in and have your full map here. You can do a classic input where you can speak the address or you can go line by line and type in the address like this. You can scroll through over here or you can type it or you can speak it, or you can twist your knob. You can set your home address. The benefit of doing that is that with your voice commands, you can say navigate home, or you can come in here and just select your home address and it'll automatically start routing you to that destination. Points of interest are places that are just around you like gas stations, uh, service centers, if you go to category search. Say you wanted to find a new restaurant in your area, you can scroll down through your different options. Let's say we want Hawaiian. You can come in here, select that one. You can start guidance or you can call them, make sure that they have your favorite dish and that they're open. It'll tell you how far away it is and how long it'll take you to get there. So that is my favorite feature. We go all the way back here in your contacts again if you have your phone connected and you have addresses saved to certain contacts you can select this and it'll show you a list of all of the addresses you have saved in your phone received destinations are destinations that you've sent to the vehicle via our bmw connected app and then gps coordinates under gps coordinates it'll show you where we are with, your cord with those GPS coordinates, or you can change them if someone were to have given you an address via GPS coordinates for whatever reason, you can input that there, and then apply coordinates, and it'll take you to that Please. spot. Here's the good stuff. Under car, you have all kinds of information that will more often than not answer most of your questions because you have your owner's manual. So you can search by a keyword, for example, if you have a question about oil, you can type that in and then scroll through and find all of the options that have anything to do with your engine oil and so on. If you go by pictures, it'll take you through 13 different options. For example, this is your engine bay. It'll tell you all about your coolant and you can kind of drill down from there. If you look at operating tips, these are actually videos that they use to train us geniuses. So for example, we click on that one, turn our volume on. And then hit play. BMW gesture control enables intuitive operation of various function. It's great. All right, quick reference. These are most commonly asked questions. For example, about refueling, people often ask, well, what kind of gas should I use? How do I open the door? And we tell them nothing under 93, and all you have to do to open it is unlock it. But this will give you all of the information you need to know about oil, whatever else, and then providing assistance. So we go back, go back back to car here in driving information this is where you see and can reset your trip data under sport displays you can see your horsepower and torque that you're using at any given time For example if we give it a little rev 
Driving style analysis is only available if you drive in EcoPro often. It'll give you tips and tricks on how to drive more efficiently if you'd like to save more gas. X-View shows you the tilt of the vehicle by degrees. It'll show you the direction and your elevation. It's very useful if you ever take the car off-road. It is safe to take the car off-road, but you don't have to. Most people don't. And then energy flow isn't really relevant on a gas car. It just shows you essentially that our engine is on. But if this were an electric vehicle, it would give you more information. That's that. In vehicle status, this is where you can view and reset your tire pressure monitor and also change the tires. You can, okay. Look at this, cut that part out. This is where you can measure your engine oil level. We won't do it now, but just shows you that it's okay. You would start your measurement, it takes about a minute. Back here under check control, it's if anything was currently going on. For example, if I open my door, it'll let you know. So anytime there's an issue, all of them will be listed in there. And then the service schedule will let you know the date or the mileage by which any of that service is due next. Under settings, this is where you can adjust almost anything here in the car. So general settings is a more in-depth menu. So you can adjust your date and time, for example. You can adjust your date and time, for example, when daylight savings comes and goes. You can change the language. You can edit your personal assistant. You can go over, change your gesture controls. You can change your driving mode, what happens when you put your car into Sport or Eco Pro. Here in exterior lighting, you can make adjustments. For example, if you want your daytime driving lights off, if you don't want that welcome carpet on, you can turn those off as well. You can adjust how long your pathway lighting is on. Under driver's assistance, the safety and warnings that you see here is also available under this button. It brings up the same menu if you push it. You can go to configure. See, it's all the same features that we were just looking at. So here you can change your warning times, how sensitive your blind spot warning is. We recommend just leaving it as is, but for example, a lot of people find lane departure warning to be a little bit annoying, so you can just turn that off. Under parking and maneuvering, you can make adjustments to your backup camera if you'd like. And then steering wheel feedback is a part of that lane departure warning system. You can adjust how intense the vibration of your steering wheel is. Under displays, you can adjust in most, you can adjust your instrument panel here. So you can change actually what appears here in the center of this. So for example, and it shows you right here what it'll look like. You can select a map you can select a route preview. So if you have navigation going, it'll give you turn by turn directions instead of the map. And then you can also add a converted speed to your dash as well. So if you like seeing the kilometers per hour, in addition to the miles per hour, you can see that there too. You can choose to have speed limit information, the excess speed, so when you're speeding, it will have a red line between the speed limit, where you should be, where you are, here under doors and access, you can adjust how high your tailgate opens. Sometimes people find that it is just touching their ceiling. Oh my god, okay, restart, don't burp. Okay. Here under doors and access, you can adjust tailgate in here, and that means it's going to change how high the tailgate opens. Some people find that their garage ceiling is a little bit low and it's scraping. so. Can make those adjustments there. Lock automatically means that. Uh, okay. So as you scroll through, it'll give you a brief explanation of what everything is over here if you ever forget. So, for example, lock automatically just means that if you've hit the unlock button and not opened a door, the car will relock itself within about a minute. Lock after starting to drive means that once you start driving, the car will lock itself. 
Unlock at end of trip means that when you put your car in park, your doors will unlock, so on and so forth. You can also set it so that the mirrors fold in when you lock it. Under interior lighting, you have what we call ambient lighting, and that's the blue lights that you see around our trim here. You can adjust the brightness if you want it to look a little bit more subtle. You can also change the color. So we have it set to blue, you can change it to green or purple, white, bronze, orange, you can dim it. Here under climate control, you can adjust. Okay. So, oh Byron, this one here, okay. this here changes the temperature of these two vents by three degrees. In older BMWs, it was a lone dial here or one on each side, but basically the purpose for that is in the summer when it's really hot outside and you're trying to cool down the car rapidly, but you have all that cold air blowing right on your face, you warm it up just a little bit to make it more comfortable for your face while still cooling down the car, vice versa in the winter. You can turn your rear climate control on and off from here and then you can have it set to your default settings. Auto recirculate just means it's automatically pulling in fresh air and recirculating it within the vehicle. Seat and steering wheel heating is adjustable. You can set it to come on automatically when the temperature dips below a set value. And then pre-ventilation is really only useful if you are working on a set schedule. You would set a time about 10 minutes before you leave every day and the car will automatically start the fans in the car. It won't change the temperature, it just gets the air moving so that it's not quite so hot and stale when you jump in. And then finally, under key button settings, this is what you want the key to unlock when you push the driver's door or the tailgate. So right now, when you hit unlock, it's set to only unlock the driver's door. It is worth noting if you push the unlock button Multiple times, it will unlock all the doors, but this is talking about when you push it only one time. You can also change it to unlock all doors. Same with the tailgate, it's set to only unlock that trunk, but you can change it to unlock your doors as well. Under driver profiles, if you have multiple people driving, you can set up multiple profiles. Your username is the email that you get your BMW emails at, and then you would set up a password at the BMW Connect to Drive portal online. So if you Google BMW Connected Drive Portal, it'll come up and you can set it up through there. If you don't know what your password is, just enter in that same email that you gave us when you bought the car and hit forget password and it will send you a link to reset your password. So we've already talked about the owner's manual. Reg regulatory notes are just legal disclaimers that we include in every vehicle now. So for example, just gives you information about whatever it is that you're looking at. Same thing in your phone. Okay, and that is it for that one. Here under apps, okay. all right, here under apps, we have installed apps, oops. So these are all the apps that come standard on a BMW. This used to be under the connected drive tab um, this used to be under the connected drive tab in iDrive 6. So you have your BMW personal assistant that we have a full video on, on the United BMW YouTube page. You can make a service appointment. You can read the news. You can look at the weather. You can find a parking spot down in Atlanta, access addresses you've sent to the car via our BMW connected app. You can rearrange these or you can look at your software information. In BMW Store, you have the option to download even more apps if you feel so inclined. Okay, coming down here, mode and band act similarly. Mode will take you through FM, AM, satellite, everything like that. Band will take you between FM and AM. This is a blank now because that used to be the eject button when we had a CD player here. This is your ambient temperature sensor. So when you have the car in auto, when you have your climate controls in auto, this is what the car uses to maintain that temperature. Turn those back down. 
This is another way to skip back and forth between radio stations. So if we push this, you'll see up here that our stations are changing. Um, again, no CD player. These are what we call hotkeys. These, in most other cars, are called presets where you would save only radio stations. The nice thing about BMW is that you can save almost anything to these buttons. And the way you do that is, for example, um, if you had your phone connected, you could save individual contacts. We don't have a phone connected, so, but it's the same premise. So what you do is you would highlight the contact you want to save and then choose the button you want it saved under. And if you run your finger over the buttons, it'll show you what's saved under there. So say we want contacts menu saved to number one. We're gonna press and hold number one. You'll hear a noise and it's saved. If you do wanna save radio stations, same thing, highlight it with this amber bar, select the button you want it saved under, and you're done. And then if you ever forget, can run your finger over it and it'll tell you what's saved. All right, menu takes you to a more, oh, okay. This menu button here on your climate controls will take you to a more in-depth menu that we looked at before. This is your max defroster for your windshield, rear defroster. This is your automatic climate control. So it's when the car will keep itself at 70 degrees, as opposed to when it's in this manual mode, it'll only blow out that temperature air. You adjust the temperature by twisting this. If your car is equipped with heated seats, this is off. When you push it one time, it'll be at the highest level. And if you just leave it, it'll slowly take itself down so it doesn't hurt, or you can just lower it yourself. <laughs> This is the adjustment for where you want the fan to blow. You just keep pushing it until it's at the setting that you want. If you have it in auto, you won't be able to control that. You can only adjust the fan speed to a point. If you take it out of auto, you can adjust the fan speed all you want. And then these are the same controls. This is your max AC button. So in the summer, it will turn the temperature to its lowest point, turn the fan to its highest point to cool down the car as quickly as possible. Sync makes the driver's side controls the master control for the entire car. So if we push this. So sync makes the driver's side control the master control for the entire vehicle. So if we push sync, you'll see this change to 72. And now if I adjust this side, the passenger side adjusts as well. This is your air recirculation button. So right now it's pulling in fresh air if you want it to only recirculate the air within the vehicle. Illuminate that light by pushing it. And then this is your AC button. Coming down here, this is a USB port. If you wanted to charge your phone with a USB cord or if you wanted to import your music, you could do that there. This is a 12 volt charging port just the cover for it. And then these are still fairly similar to the previous model. So menu is essentially your home button. So if you get lost in menus, you can just push this and it'll take you back to your home screen. These are shortcuts for the four main menu options. So your back button, this is your electronic parking brake. Then so you pull up to engage it push down to disengage it. This is your backup camera. This is your front camera. This is what we call hill descent control. And I have videos explaining all of these three. These are your driving modes. So we have sport, comfort, and eco pro. The car will always start in comfort, but you can adjust it at any time. This is your traction control here. So here in your center console, this is what we call a USB-C port. This is a newer kind of port that we don't see as often because it is still pretty new, but it just charges your phone faster than the standard USB port would. So you can find cables online. They're pretty affordable, or you can buy one straight from Apple or Samsung for about $20.